Hey, what's up everybody? Sysadmin Sean here, and we are finally getting into the what is system administration video that many people have been asking for. So I'm gonna go through a few of the questions that were posted in the comments, and I might ramble a little bit, but I wanna talk about as much as I can in as short amount of time as possible, so let's get started. Um, so the first question, what is system administration? Uh, this is a really broad question because system administration can mean so many different things to so many different job sites, the different locations of what I do as a system administrator will be something completely different to what someone else does as a system administrator. So a lot of what I'm going to tell you today, a lot of the experiences I've had, the skills that I've learned and used and picked up, the way that I've gotten into my position are very specific to me, I feel. Um, there will be people that have similar uh, situations, but they probably won't be exactly like mine and they shouldn't be because honestly, it's really a cool profession that exists through so much variety. And I think that's one of the best parts about it is how how various, how, how broad it is, it's cool. So for me, system administration has always meant maintaining an infrastructure in a data center and maintaining the services that that infrastructure offers to your customers, your organization usually. <laughs> You know, so if you have Active Directory to allow identity management for your users, then you're managing domain controllers. If you have a file server, instead of using cloud storage, such as like OneDrive or something like that, then that is your, you know, service that you're offering. You're maintaining a file server and permissions and shares and things of that nature. If you have any of these systems in your data center, then you're probably also doing data backup, disaster recovery preparations, business continuity pr preparations um, to, you know, to protect all of this information. Now, <clears throat> in other places, it might be that there is a single Windows system administrator or a domain admin group, and that's all they do is Active Directory. So they handle, you know, DNS, they handle uh, DHCP sometimes, and then computer objects, user objects, GPOs, things of that sort. And then maybe you'll have backup admins that only maintain backups. Uh, but in my situation, it's sort of always become, well, we take care of everything because <clears throat> a lot of times other people didn't want to do it. <laughs> and sometimes other people retired or jobs changed and we absorb duties and that let us absorb some salary. So that's really cool. We do all of those things. Plus we do racking and stacking of hardware, lifecycle management of hardware and OS, et cetera, et cetera, all of that cool stuff. But that's, that's the basic of what a system administrator is. So how did I learn it? Um, <laughs> I do not have a undergraduate degree in IT. I have a history major with a minor in international business. Uh, recently, as of last year, I got my master's degree in information technology systems management so that I could go into a CIO position later if I wanted to. So how did I get into IT to begin with? Well, I was always really interested in computers as a child. I messed around with them all the time. I broke my parents' computer quite a few times, learned how to fix it because otherwise the $2,000 down the drain uh, back in those those days in that dollar amount. Um, and then that kind of grew into, at first I thought I wanted to go to school for it. I really thought, oh yeah, this will be great. But then all my teachers said, well, it's going to be so much math. It's going to be all math classes all the time, which is probably true for computer science and any sort of programming track but there are plenty of tracks that exist now especially that it's not really about math so much you do take some math courses but there's a lot more technical courses related to it um, so I, that's why i didn't get the degree in it i was told it was going to be a bunch of math and i'm really bad at math so i just kept tinkering in it and then when i went to college i was like oh, i can fix desktop computers i'll apply for a help desk position that'll be kind of fun and it'll be easy so i did that for a while <coughs> And then I sort of climbed up the ladder there and that's how I learned a ton of stuff. I learned all of my soft skills, how to work with customers, how to work in meetings, how to com you know communicate properly, how to do documentation, um, things that are gonna go out to people, stuff like that. And then I worked on my troubleshooting skills, starting at the, the most simplest solution and working into harder and harder solutions to figure out what a problem is and how to, how to get rid of it, <clears throat> how to fix it. <laughs> Uh, so I did those things, moved up to a different technician role, then moved into a higher technician role back at the university. Uh, and then that kind of gave me the pathway to know all the skills I needed to know to feel good about possibly starting in the sysadmin. So that's how I learned everything was on the job training, sink or swim type situations where I had to prove myself 
uh, quite often because I didn't have that degree that said undergraduate in TSM or CS or you know any of those things. I just didn't have it. What kind of skills do you need to be a system administrator? Well, the first one again is soft skills, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, with soft skills, you're able to communicate better with others. You're able to help explain issues and, and help understand issues a lot clearer. And you're able to get to a resolution much faster. And that's really what the customer wants is a quick, good resolution. Um, and with soft skills, you get a lot of that because you're able to just talk to them. Whereas I can't think of a single job I've ever had where I didn't have to talk to somebody about something, whether it was customers, coworkers, superiors, subordinates, you're going to have to interact with a lot of people, no matter what you do in IT. And you need to know how to interact in a good, clear, concise way. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, act a certain way or speak a certain way. You just need to be able to speak in a way that's professional. <laughs> uh, the next skill I would highly recommend is basic troubleshooting skills, being able to kind of look at a problem and dissect it and break it down is really important in the sysadmin world. You know, you can learn everything about windows in the world, but if you can't apply what you've learned from that, then you're not going to be very useful in a sysadmin role. If you can look at a problem and go, I don't really know what's going on here, but I know how to research and break down this problem into the different pieces. This piece is a networking issue. This piece is a software issue. This piece is a hardware issue. Let's do these things to try and fix it. That's really critical. Being able to kind of understand a problem and know how to get to a solution as opposed to knowing all the information, but not being able to apply any of it. As for very specific skills, the the sky's the limit learn everything you can certs all you want go ahead cloud on-prem whatever you want to learn about learn about whatever interests you focus on that because you're going to need to know a lot of stuff but it doesn't hurt to be a, a somewhat specialist in some field find what find what you really like and you'll do that as you kind of go up the it ladder as you're working your way up to different positions you're going to start working on projects and things like that, that really lean into your skill sets heavily. And if you have a good supervisor, they're also gonna put you on projects that you have zero skills at so that you can build those skills. I didn't have any skills in budgeting, dealing with vendors, getting quotes, getting design layouts until my boss said, here, you're doing it. I don't want to this time. And he was really just saying, you're doing it because you need to learn how to do it because it's gonna make you a better worker in the future. And he's right. Uh, so. All of that sort of communication, troubleshooting, breaking down problems, being flexible really is probably one of the best skills to have too. That will lead to a ton of great success in the sysadmin field. So how to get into the field? Well, obviously you say you get a degree, you get some certificates, you just start applying for jobs. You know, it's not, there's nothing magical about getting an IT job other than you've got to start somewhere. Sometimes you won't be able to jump right into system administration. I didn't. You know, as I said, I started as a help, deck to help desk technician and got the skills that took me up to system administration and now senior HPC system administration, um, which is a really odd title to me, but it does exist. <laughs> and so that's how I did it. That's how you can do it. Uh, that's how anybody really does it, to be perfectly honest, unless you happen to know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody and they can bump you into a system admin role. You usually start at the bottom, you pick up skills, you build years of experience, and then you jump into a sysadmin role. And then from sysadmin, you jump somewhere else, which leads into our next question. Where can you go with a sysadmin resume, essentially? So let's say you've been a system administrator for, I don't know, four or five years. You've probably built up quite a good knowledge of operating systems, hardware, possibly storage systems, different, op you know, different application stacks, you know, containers, automation, you've worked on all of these different things. Well, now you can go pretty much anywhere. You've got a background in a lot of stuff that would lead into a DevOps role. You've got a background that would lead into a lot of security roles, if that's what you wanted. And you even end up getting a background that could lead you in a managerial role. Because when I got bumped to a senior the first time at my previous position, uh, that soon meant that I had to be a mentor to the other sysadmins. They didn't report to me. I didn't have any control over them as far as like, yeah, they can stay, they get fired. I don't like this person. They need That wasn't on me. But what was on me was, hey, let's learn how to do this. You learn how to do this. You teach us. You learn how to do this. You teach us. I'll learn how to do this. I'll teach you. I got to make those decisions. I got to help manage that team 
in the direction we felt we needed to go. Um, same in this position. I just recently finished up an internship um, with a student on campus and tried to give them as much exposure to sysadmin as possible without hopefully not overwhelming them, but sometimes it felt like I probably overwhelmed them. But now he can take that, uh, that, that experience, put it on his resume, and he's more qualified for jobs in the future. And that's super important. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I think I went through that a little fast, but I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Being a system administrator is really rewarding work, but it can also be really stressful work. Um, people that watch this video that know me know exactly how stressful uh, it can be on me. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Uh, big thanks to my Patreon. It's still just one, but that's all right. Um, and big thanks to everybody for watching. I hope you all become system administrators. And if you're watching this and you're thinking you're interested in other job titles, let me know in the comments below. I have a ton of friends in the IT sphere that would more than likely love to do a simple interview where I ask them basically these same questions and they give us answers and we get a more broad understanding of everyone's experience in IT and how that goes. So thanks again.